Are you cruising through life not always knowing what direction you were headed? Let Live On Purpose with Dr. Paul Jenkins be your guide. Live On Purpose will give you insights into your life and show you how you can become the driver and captain of it. No more aimless wandering. By learning the principles that govern happiness and wealth, you will be able to make personal progress that you have only dreamed possible. And now, here's your host, the shrink who expands your life, Dr. Paul. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Live on Purpose Radio. This is Dr. Paul, the shrink who expands your life, bringing you another episode of Live on Purpose Radio. We want to give you the principles and the concepts that are going to help you to live on purpose. So that's what we're here for today. And I've got a couple of guests. I'll introduce them right off the bat so that we can get into our topic. I have a returning guest to Live on Purpose Radio. This is Summer Morris. Welcome back, Summer. Thank you. I'm so glad to be back. Thanks, It's always Paul. fun to have you on the show. Thank you. I love it. We have worked together for quite a while. Yes. And uh, most of that has been in the context of clinical services mm-hmm. through Preferred Family Clinic, where we have both had a long and illustrious career. <laughs> and uh, just helping people on a very, on a very basic level. That's the trenches, you know? Yeah. When it comes to counseling and mental health services, and and so that's been kind of fun, and we've branched out and and gotten into some coaching and and delivering other kinds of services through the internet, blogging, podcasting, speaking. So we've we've led sort of parallel careers <laughs> so far, and uh, that's it's always fun to have you on the show. Thank you, I appreciate I'm glad you. You're here. And then we have a new guest to Live on Purpose Radio. His name is Matt Edvick. Did I say that right? You said it exactly right, yeah. Just right. Wonderful. Welcome, Matt. Thank you. And Matt is joining us for a lot of interesting reasons. We'll get into some of those as we develop the topic. But Matt is a a math teacher of all things. But he (laughs) has developed a specialized area where he is practicing his skill and that is with, uh, with teenage girls in a private residential facility. That's right. That's and so, right. And so you have some exposure to um, some kids who have had some interesting things happen in their life. For whatever reason, they're in this residential treatment program. And uh, sometimes they're struggling with some difficulties or some, some other issues that have gotten them into that, that particular placement. That's true. Yeah. And one of the things that I love about what I do and being able to work with the girls is to be able to teach them, you have value. Yes, you've had Mm. these things happen in your life, but you have value. You're an incredible person and you have Mm -hmm. something that you can really give the world. And the funny thing is, is being able to use math as a springboard to that because math really is just full of Principles, and I tell the girls, principles is my second favorite word. I love the Mm -hmm. word principles because they're always true. They always work. Math is that way. If you just learn Mm -hmm. the principles, it's easy. Life is that way. If you learn the life principles and learn how to follow the life principles, life becomes easier. Maybe not easy, but... Well, more predictable. And you're able to take... Take a higher level of control of your life once you understand those principles. Yeah, that's a great way to phrase it. And so to be able to use mathematics as a way to jump into, here are some life principles that you can live and you can use that will greatly mm-hmm. benefit your life and, and enhance your life and your happiness and the peace and joy that you feel as you go throughout your life and your ability to help others um, is just, it's what I love to do. Mm. Well, I think you'll feel right at home at Live On Purpose Radio. That's what we do. We talk about principles and how they apply in your life. And there's a lot of ways to get to the principles. Now, Summer, you've worked a lot with teenage girls as well. Right. Yeah. So I wonder if that might unite (laughs) our theme a little bit here today. (laughs) The two of you both have an interest in working with particularly teenage girls who, who are in need of principles. 
Right. Okay? Of course, we're all in need of principles, but these are particularly uh, uh, either. Tr- I don't. I don't want to use the word troubled because that carries a lot of baggage. You right. know what I'm saying? Because they're just kids. Yeah. They're just <laughs> girls. Everybody, every teen girl needs needs principles in their life, whether they've had major traumatic experiences occur in their life or whether they have pretty had it pretty easy, um, considering maybe family or, or environmental circumstances. But they, you know, everybody, like you said, everyone needs principles mm-hmm. to live by. And, and I think for teen girls that this is one of the most difficult ages for them is, is during these teen years of trying to find, find who they are and find themselves. And I think mm-hmm. in our ability to teach um, true principles really can help them. Well, and if you ask girls, what do you think are the two biggest problems that girls face? Mm. Every answer they give revolves around self-esteem issues, self-worth issues, whether it's friends and how I relate with my friends and, and having friends, or do boys like me and do boys find me attractive and a, a whole other range of of behaviors and worries that girls have, but... Mm-hmm. typically they will answer with something that has to do with self-esteem and self-worth. And that's what we're trying to accomplish is, is helping to girls see that they do have worth and it comes from inside and teach them how to bring that out in themselves. So we'll be talking about teenage girls a lot, but they're just an example and a pretty darn good example <laughs> too, because like you said, Matt, this is a really prevalent, prominent issue. For, for young ladies in their teenage years. It really is. And Summer, you and I did a show over a year ago called Building Lasting Self-Esteem. And I got to tell you, that is the number two <laughs> show in terms of popularity for Live On Purpose Radio. And so this is something that is really prevalent. Right, as, among everyone. Right. And as a parent, I don't have a teenage daughter. I have three teenage sons. And I will have a teenage yes. daughter in two years. <laughs> yes, you will. Because <laughs> she'll hit her teens in about two years. And, and so as a parent, I'm really interested in this too. So I want to pick your minds a little bit today and have you talk a little bit about what factors you've identified as you've worked with these girls. What factors have you identified that are probably the most powerful uh, factors that lead to either a positive or a negative outcome. Mm -hmm. And in the context of the treatment facilities or the treatment programs or the treatment activities that you've done with with these teenage girls, it might make sense to identify what doesn't work first. Yeah. that be all right? Yes, absolutely. (laughs) Then we won't spend a whole lot of time on that because I have this basic theory that you do more of what works and less of what doesn't. Mm -hmm. So if we can identify what doesn't work, then we'll not do that. (laughs) (laughs) And then put a lot of emphasis on, okay, what works? Right. Absolutely. So who wants to start? Well, we did uh, in our show, Paul, Building Lasting Self-Esteem, I talked about the three C's. And today, Matt and I really, as as I've thought about that for Mm -hmm. quite a while and we've worked together, we've come up with alternative C's that we Ah, want to share with everyone today. Perfect. But we probably ought to review those old C's too. Yes. It's been over a year (laughs) somewhere. It's been a long time. And it's a podcast for Pete's sake. Go get the archive. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) You can listen to, but let's review it on this show too. Sure. The first C um, is compare. Compare. So, and describe that. What, What do you mean? We can, everyone looks around and, and compares themselves to themselves to others. And I think that's, that's primarily what, um, there's two areas that I think we compare ourselves to. One is against Mm. ourselves and Mm. the other is against other people. And in all different areas of, of, you know, our, our appearance, our abilities, Mm. our talents, our accomplishments, um, the way that others view us, I think is, is one of the, um, most damaging ways that we can, we compare. So just to clarify these three C's, that we're talking about first are the ones that create misery. Yes. Within within your own mind and in your self-esteem, but also in a relationship. Mm-hmm. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was just going to add on to what Summer said. A lot of times when we are comparing ourselves with other people, we compare our worst traits with their best. I, I'm a horrible singer, and it's one of the things that I wish God had 
blessed me with when I was born to be able to sing. It's something that I would love to do, and I just can't do it. Mm. And I've got a great friend who who is a tremendous musician and a, and a great singer. And if I compared myself with him on the basis of singing ability, I would not like myself. And I would resent him because he had the talent and the ability, and I don't. And so that mm. creates resentment inside of, inside of me and, and makes me feel like I'm less worthwhile or less of a person. Right. That you're inadequate because you're so far below that standard. Exactly. Which, which is the third thing, Summer, that I thought about when you were mentioning that we compare ourselves to ourselves and we also compare ourselves to others. Mm -hmm. But there's a third thing that we compare ourselves to a standard of perfection. And... And it may not have to do with anyone else, but just looking at all of your flaws as compared to a standard of perfection. Right. And, and how many perfect people do you know? None. None? <laughs> There's only one. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know any perfect people. No, they don't exist here. <laughs> and yet we have a tendency as human beings, and maybe more so as teens, but I'm not even convinced that that's completely true. We have a tendency as human beings to set up a perfect standard in our mind and then compare ourselves to that perfect standard. And you always come up short. Mm -hmm. Well, always, you always, to, always, always. Sure. If there's a perfect standard, you're never going to mm -hmm. meet up. And, and sometimes even if you, if you feel like you're measuring to some degree, you're, you're still far below the mark of perfection. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. So comparing. Yes. That's the first C. Yes. What's the second one? Uh, the second C is... Um, girls and people in general, but especially teenage girls tend to compete with each other. Mm. There's actually what I find so interesting about competing as well is there's a biological reason for competition. <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> and that is because every, you know, at this age with, with teens, they're, they're competing for the attention of, of the opposite gender. Um, and biologically they're wired to do so. And, there, and there's a reason mm. because they're wanting to become more desirable or more attractive so that they have that relationship in their life. So this is almost like those, those National Geographic or NOVA <laughs> programs where, you know, you see this, this group of, of wolves or something like that. <laughs> right. You know? And I don't want to push this too far, obviously. <laughs> but, but they compete for a mate. Right. And that's so that they have an opportunity to perpetuate the species. Mm -hmm. And so you're saying that this is something that kicks in with people too. Yes. Yeah. There's that. And that's kind of why I brought that up is there's actually the biological reason. So there's more than, com there's more than com to mm. competing than just for attention. I imagine there's other reasons too. Yes. We'll come right back mm -hmm. to that. Thank you for joining me for the Live On Purpose radio podcast. It is truly an honor to be a part of your prosperity team. Please visit my website, drpaul.org, to get connected with other tools for you and your family. There you will find links to my weekly e-zine, Empower, Harnessing the Power of the Mind, and to the free Parental Power teleconference that I host every week with my wife, Vicki. You can also check out upcoming events, or pick up powerful information products. Feel free to contact me directly with questions, comments, or to book me for your company or private event. Email me through Dr. Paul at liveonpurposeradio.com. If the pile of books you want to read is growing faster than the pile you have read, then Abundant Reading Systems can help you. After taking Abundant Reading Systems course, I dramatically increased my ability to expand my knowledge in a much more efficient way. My fastest test today was in 7,000 words per minute. I highly recommend this program from what I've seen it do for other people who've been through the entire program and from what I've seen in myself today. I've teamed up with Abundant Reading Systems to offer a single day intensive speed reading workshop that will at least double your reading speed, guaranteed. This belief started to grow inside of me that I thought, oh, I can really do this. I can read you know, as fast as I let myself read. 
and uh, ended up doubling my time, my speed reading time, which was really good. This is David Hinton, founder of Abundant Reading Systems. I want to personally invite you to join us for our next event. Visit AbundantReadingSystems.com now. Abundant Reading Systems, reading at the speed of imagination. Biological reasons for competition. Interesting, <laughs> Summer. Th there's other reasons too. Social reasons. Yep. Um, and some of that has to do with just expectations that we set up as part of our culture. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? And what are they competing on or about? Yeah, I saw. Speaking of National Geographic, <laughs> <laughs> I saw my kids laugh at me sometimes because I like these documentaries. Me too. That you can see on like the Discovery Channel and, mm -hmm. and those kinds of things. Fascinating to me. And there was one about a culture, uh, a tribal culture in Africa somewhere. I can't even remember exactly where. But the thing that they competed about was who had the biggest lip. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the women. Yes. And they, they would actually stretch their lip and put these plates in there, you yeah. know, until it was literally, you know, like a pizza. <laughs> yes. Just hanging out there. And they interviewed one of the guys through an interpreter. And he says, ah, I don't want a girl that doesn't have a big lip. <laughs> 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 I'm looking at it from my cultural perspective and I'm thinking, no ah, thanks. <laughs> that's not looking so good to me. <laughs> you know? But there are these cultural expectations too. Mm -hmm. And then to fit in, these girls are going to compete based on the standards that are set up in that cultural norm yeah. and the expectation. Does that sound accurate to you? Yeah, absolutely. That's, mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, and you, I, I think that's a great point that you bring up is there are cultural norms when we're talking about these three C's and how relevant mm -hmm. they are to, you know, the different ages of, of everybody, you know, or whether we're talking about teens or whether we're talking about adults in their own mm -hmm. cultural context. So the, those two sounds so similar to me, comparing and competing and you have to compare to compete well they, they do go hand in hand and and in competing there's a there's a big element of i've got to protect my ego my ego is is me and i've got to make sure that i'm higher than this many people and if i'm higher than this many people then i feel good about myself rather than helping to lift other people up and mm -hmm. lifting your up lifting yourself up and lifting other people along with you as mm -hmm. as you make yourself a better person. That's right. That is so inherently dangerous from a psychological perspective to compare yourself to other people. And the reason is you can't put yourself only above other people or only below other people. Because you're going to do both right. anytime you compare yourself. So Adam over here, who's running the boards, <laughs> <laughs> he's a cross-country runner. And he's got a race tomorrow. And for sure, he's going to beat somebody. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not so sure that he's going to get beat by anybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, chances are he's going to get beat by either you're the first place guy or you got beat by somebody and you beat somebody right either you're the last place guy or you got beat by somebody and you beat somebody that's true okay so uh, look at this in terms of self-esteem some people come into my office uh, with concerns about this and they say i'm just the worst person ever mm-hmm <laughs> is that even possible? No, you don't know everybody. You can't compare yourself to, you know, being the worst because you don't know everyone. <laughs> right. And as measured by what? Right. And right? Who, according to who? <laughs> so we have these favorite things that we like to use to compare and compete. And you have this little set of standards in your head that may or may not have a connection with the real world. So, And that's actually a helpful thing. I know we're not getting into treatment yet. <laughs> but but I'm thinking, what, you know, ask a different question. I love the question compared to what? Mm -hmm. 
You know, so if you're saying inside your own mind, oh, I'm terrible. All right, compared to what? What's interesting is so many people will say when they are in kind of those situations, I think Mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that will say, everybody Really? And it's so universal. Everybody. <laughs> well, and those, <laughs> those feelings are so real to that person that until they see that there's a different option, and then they're like, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, right. there's a different way to think about that. Oh, I never knew. And then you can start mm-hmm. working with those, those feelings and, and changing how they feel. But until that happens, that's their reality. That's real for them. You have to break out of your stinking thinking. Right. They really do believe that they're the worst person in the whole world. Exactly, yeah. And sometimes I will challenge that and I'll say, so like you are worse than, and then I'll pick something out of my <laughs> hat, you know, Saddam Hussein mm-hmm. or Osama bin Laden. You know, I don't want to pick on those guys necessarily because they're only evil compared to what? Exactly. You know? <laughs> but Good compared point. to this girl that you're talking to. Sure. Chances are she's probably a little better moral thinker than either of those guys. Sure. You know what I'm saying? But maybe she never even thought about that. Maybe that never occurred to her. Right. And one of the things that I see when when girls are in that mindset is I'll do an exercise with them sometimes and just talk about what is it that you want? And they're so afraid to want anything and to dream about anything because they feel like they deserve bad things to happen to them. They don't deserve Mm -hmm. to have good things happen in their lives because, well, I've done this and this and this and I'm a horrible person or I'm not as pretty as this person or I'm not as skinny as the the girl on the magazine and so I don't deserve good things to happen in my life. And so they create not good things happening in their life. And that includes their emotional experience. Mm Mm-hmm. They don't, they don't deserve to be happy because, well, after all, they're terrible, right? Right. And so <laughs> they systematically go through these psychological calisthenics that have them consistently miserable. Right. And that's okay because that's what they deserve. Yeah. In their head, you they've know? created Somehow the standard. Somehow that makes sense to them. Mm-hmm. It's an yeah. inter- as, as, we, as we'll get into that a little bit more on the positive side of that, we'll, we'll talk about ways that you know, we, can, we combat that by just honestly thinking just maybe one or two thoughts different in your own head and the power that that can create. Well, we better get to that sooner than later. Yeah, let's do that. (laughs) So what's that third C? That last C is criticize. And again, kind of feeds into the other two, you know, comparing and competing. Criticizing is, goes hand in hand with those as well. But I think critis, criticism comes as a greater cost sometimes when that criticism is um, self-directed. I think it's just as damaging, you know, also to criticize others. Um, But when it's against yourself and you're criticizing yourself every day, you know, waking up in the morning and the first thing you see is in the mirror is something that you hate or something that you don't like or something that you believe is unattractive or non undeserving or things like that every day that they go, you know, that you go through thinking that way, being so critical of yourself is just so destructive. Mm. Well, and then to go through a day of, of, school and criticism i i think among kids but especially among girls is so prevalent in the in the competing the way you bring someone else down is to criticize them and if you read uh how to win friends and influence people which i think Mm -hmm. everybody should read the very first principle he talks about is never criticize condemn or complain Mm -hmm. and the reason why that is is because as soon as you criticize someone they get defensive and their walls go up and there's no way to communicate Mm -hmm. because two sides are defending and you've just got an argument instead of real communication. That's right. This is something that was really clearly illuminated in some research that was done by Dr. John Gottman, who's a relationship expert. Right. And he's widely known for that. And he came up with, he called them the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Remember this summer? Yeah, yeah. And, and it's basically the death and destruction and end of the world for a relationship if you get into these four, these four. C's in a habitual ingrained way. And the first one is criticism, mm-hmm. which leads to defensiveness and then to contempt and, and to isolation or stonewalling is what he called it. 
And it just it's the death sentence for a relationship if criticism is the mode, if if that is the habit within a relationship. One of the best ways too, that just as you were saying that, I was thinking of one of the um, ways that girls feel the most confident about themselves is by looking at how many relationships they have, you know, how many friends they have, how many people like them, how many, you know, people notice them or know who they are. And that's, that is so tied to their confidence. But yet when you're criticizing yourself and you're criticizing others, how, how many friends might you have? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's creating your own death sentence, you know, not Mm just, not just in a relationship, but even for your own, for your own thinking. Mm -hmm. But for some weird reason, they feel a sense of power. I talked to a girl the other day and she said, this girl said a mean thing to me and, and I could have said something that really would have just ruined her world. And I really wanted to, but I didn't. And I said, uh, good for you <laughs> for not saying it, but you like that power, don't you? Of you can really ruin someone's day and ruin someone's world. By one comment. By one comment. And she said, I, yeah, I, I do uh-huh. like that power. And I said, well, when you learn to lift other people up and see other people be successful, then you have joy, which mm-hmm. is different than that feeling of power and satisfaction that you have. It's a different kind of power. It's a different kind of power mm-hmm. and, it, and it gives you a different result. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of counterfeits out there. And when you talk about this power, it does carry real power. Think about it, though. You... My boys dragged me off to a movie not too long ago called Iron Man. And it's a really good show. I enjoyed it. Uh, (laughs) But it's one of these superhero shows, you know, like Spider-Man, Superman, all these guys. But uh, it just reaffirmed in my mind that there's power on both sides of the spectrum. The good guys have power and the bad guys have power, but they apply it very differently. I think the difference between a villain and a superhero is a choice. One. Yeah. It's a choice. Mm -hmm. And this is the same thing that we're talking about here. Does that girl that you were talking to, Matt, have power? Yes. Either either way, Mm. she decides to use it. There's no question about it. Mm -hmm. So the question is, how is she going to use that power? How are you going to use that power, dear listener? (laughs) You know, because you got the same power. And the difference between a villain and a superhero is a choice. Now, that's profound when you really think about it. And I'm not saying that because I just said it. <laughs> I didn't, I, I'll say it for you. I didn't that make that profound, up. That was profound, Paul. <laughs> hey, thanks, Summer. <laughs> I didn't make that up. You read any of the great mentors and teachers and prophets and other people who have taught these principles forever. And that it's always consistent. That's the choice. It's the choice. Stick with us. We'll be right back. This is Shay Larson, IdeaOrbit.com, with the World of Ideas Report. Do you remember watching the futuristic cartoon The Jetsons? Did you ever think it would be possible to put a jetpack on your back and fly around like a superhero? Well, hold on to your purse. Because as of last month, it is now not only possible, there is a new product on the market that you can purchase that will send you soaring like Superman. Glenn Martin's dream of making personal flight a reality is now just that. The Martin Jetpack currently sells for a cool $100,000 and is available online. After purchase, you are required to meet certain agreements and regulations Then, you will be professionally trained for personal flight. The Martin Jetpack can go 63 miles per hour, can take you 8,000 feet off the ground, and can travel 31 miles before it requires refueling. Analysts are saying within 10 to 15 years, it is very possible that we will be personally flying to work and the grocery store. 
To Glenn Martin, we offer our impressed congratulations for his uplifting idea. This is Shay Larson, IdeaOrbit.com, with the World of Ideas Report. I've got a great idea. Wouldn't you like to know? You probably can't bear it, so I guess I'll have to share it. I thought of it a moment. Thank you for listening to Live On Purpose Radio. Some of you have been asking how you can get more involved with the show. And I also appreciate those of you who have offered to support the show. Now you can do both easily by purchasing a Top Spots listing. For a very small donation to the show, your link will be posted at liveonpurposeradio.com. Just go to the website and look for the Top Spots widget on the right side panel. Click at the bottom and follow the simple instructions. You will then be at the top of the list. Thanks for your support. Okay, we've just finished off all of our halftime nachos and root beer and all that stuff. (laughs) My favorite part. Wasn't that awesome? Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and we're having some good conversation, some of which is happening with a teenage boy who's in the room. <laughs> and he's very interested in this whole topic because you know what one of his favorite things is in the whole world? Besides cross-country running? Girls. Teenage girls. <laughs> yes. That's why he's smiling so big right now. <laughs> and he's thinking, Dad, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> he may not share it with his friends if I keep going on, right? <laughs> You know, there are some interesting uh, thoughts that have come up through this discussion, and I think we have led to and and kind of hinted toward some alternates. Let's do more of what works and less of what doesn't. If comparing and competing and criticizing are on the destructive, let's call it the villain end of all of this, mm-hmm. Uh, maybe you guys could come up with three C's on the hero end of the of the whole thing. You think so? Definitely. That, you don't look too stumped. I think you're ready for that. <laughs> Do you want to start us off with that, Matt? What What would be an alternative to the comparing? An alternative to comparing yourself to others is to build character within yourself, and so that's the first functional C is character. Character. And and if I'm spending so much time comparing myself with other people, that's time I'm not spending developing myself and developing Mm. my talents and my skills and what I'm passionate about and what I'm naturally good at. And I use the example of my friend who's a good singer and I'm not a good singer, but I have Mm -hmm. skills and abilities that are unique to me that make it that, let me phrase this the right way, that help me to excel in what I do as a, as a math mm-hmm. teacher. And that's what I love to do. That's what I'm passionate about. And if I focus so much on what someone else is good at, instead of focusing on what finding out what I'm good at and what I love to do mm-hmm. and where I can make a huge difference in the world, then I'm spending all that time looking at other people and making myself feel bad instead of building character within myself and developing mm-hmm. my skills and, and what I want to do to be able to impact the world. And I think that that's part of where lasting self-esteem comes from is to develop within myself the self-control and the ability to, to keep commitments and to know I'm on purpose. Like, like you say, live on purpose. And when Mm -hmm. I'm on purpose doing what I'm best at and what I love to do, rather than comparing myself, there's a lot of peace and happiness that comes along with that. There's, um, there's a barrier that I can see to this, and it has to do with, with physics. And in physics, there's a law called entropy. Do you remember that one? Mm-hmm. And basically, it just means that everything seeks uh, to return or to go to its most disorganized state. So uh, chaos theory mm-hmm. sort of thing. And without getting into all of the details about that... The short version is it's a lot easier to wreck something than it is to build something. It takes a lot more effort, a lot more work. Well, I can destroy in a couple of hours what it takes a builder months to do. Right. True. 
And there's a poem about that. I posted it at Empower. Once you guys go search the Empower blog if you want to. Uh, it's called Builders and Wreckers, and it's mm-hmm. really a way to get you thinking about this. I think this is one of the reasons, though, Matt, why some people avoid doing the hard thing, which is building character, as opposed to the easy thing, which is wrecking or destroying character. <laughs> True. I think most people most people just want to be entertained. Mm. They just want to get through the day and have life not be too hard. That's the easy downhill road. That's the easy downhill road. Mm-hmm. And But the hard part about it is when you get to the end of that road, there's dissatisfaction and misery mm-hmm. and just being really unfulfilled. Mm-hmm. And when that dissatisfaction gets bad enough, people decide to start to change. You know, you're cracking me up, Matt. <laughs> he's a math teacher who talks like a therapist. I know, he's amazing. My math teachers didn't talk <laughs> like that. There's always derivatives and quadratics and, you know, all that stuff. Well, we could talk about that too, but that's another <laughs> show, right? <laughs> Summer, you had a comment about that too. Oh, I just think when you think about I, I, that's why I love this word so much. Character is a word that we do not use nearly as often as I think that we need to when we think about building ourselves and building up who we are. Um, because character to me represents so many different things. It, it's integrity. It's tied to integrity for me. And when I think of integrity, I think of, you know, honest, being honest and true with who you are. And when you're competing or excuse me, when you're comparing yourself, you're not really being honest and true with, with mm-hmm. yourself as we talked about earlier in the show today. And so I think as we build character, we're creating a truer sense of actually who we really are. Mm-hmm. I think that there's two ways to do this as well. And we're talking about interpersonal relationships, but also intrapersonal relationships, Mm -hmm. the the ones that are inside of you, Mm -hmm. building your own character. What could you do to build other people's character too? Right. Summer, you had an interesting comment during halftime about, (laughs) about compliments. Oh, I just remember being, you know, myself being in high school and I had, you know, a number of friends. I'm a pretty complimentary person. I like to, you know tell people that I think they look cute or I like their bag or I like Mm -hmm. what they did. And I remember in high school, I had a a friend of mine who would never accept a compliment that every time I said something positive, you look cute or I like that jacket or whatever. It was no, 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 no. And I'd say, no, really I do. No, I'm just ugly. No, I just, I hate this. No, I don't even know why I'm wearing it today. I mean, everything was (laughs) so destructive that I honestly got done giving compliments to her. Mm. And it was just done. I just kind of turned off and it said, sucks okay. sucks the energy right out of it, doesn't it? Yeah, it's hard when you don't accept that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're not accepting of those things. Or sometimes when the compliment is given, oh, I hate you. You're always so cute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, is that a compliment? <laughs> How or... do I take that? Do I? Are you saying I look cute or are you saying that And they mean it as me? a compliment, but they put this little thing in there about the competition mm-hmm. and the comparison. But if you're really building character, how could you say that in another way? You know? Yeah, without... Um, you, you are so cute. I just love you. Yeah, I love that about you. You always look mm-hmm. so great, you know? And it's sincere and it's, and it's genuine mm-hmm. and it's honest. Totally different feel. Well, and it's like you said earlier, that's a simple choice mm-hmm. that you can make that, that's really easy and just in the moment instead of saying, I hate you, you're so cute. You're so cute. I love the way you look today. And there's mm-hmm. a completely different feel and dynamic to what's said. Mm-hmm. That's right. Do you notice it's a little bit of an uphill choice, though? Because mm-hmm. it, it's a downhill choice to say, I hate you. It's an uphill choice to say, I like you or mm-hmm. I love you. In fact, we hesitate to say that sometimes because you know what are people gonna think (laughs) right but but that's a social gift you can give someone to to express liking Mm -hmm. you know i i like you so much you're always so well dressed you know, and that sounds a little corny too. Even if when I say it, because I'm, you know, <laughs> Doctor Paul. But how would a teenage girl say that? In a way that's the uphill choice, in a way that's the high road choice. You know, I'm just trying to get to this, this villain versus superhero. Which one are you gonna be? 
Well, yeah, I, I, I just was going to, you know, comment on, on what you were saying as far as the work that it takes. Um, because if you're thinking of comparing how much, you know, one simple comparison is, or whether it's a compliment or the lack thereof, maybe is what we're talking mm -hmm. about. How, how damaging might that be to the friend that you're giving that compliment to? And what are you doing to yourself in the process? So it's not only destructive on one end, but it's so destructive internally right. and externally. Because people mm -hmm. won't know if you're really being genuine if you say something like that. I hate that about, you know, I hate you. You look so cute. And, mm -hmm. you know, they're not sure how to take that. Are you meaning that sincerely? Um, because it would probably come across better yeah. and feel better to that person and to the person that's saying it if it was just one choice different, right. one small thing different. You can't help someone without helping yourself. And you can't hurt someone without hurting yourself. If we realize that we're all connected in that way, I think we'd approach our, our relationships a lot differently. Mm -hmm. Well, competing, yes. how do we counteract that one? Summer, do you want to take that one on? Sure. I think instead of competing, we've come up with the other C of being creative. And um, being mm -hmm. creative in, in your attempts maybe to communicate with people, being creative in your in your internal look at yourself. You know, not, Instead of just thinking of your hair or your eyes or your nose or your clothes, what else could you, you know, think of about yourself um, that's more internally based that, and be creative in the way that you view yourself because mm -hmm. it is hard. Sometimes you, you really have a, a bad, <laughs> a bad hair day, <laughs> we'll say, you know, but really it might be, that's a girl comment. Do you have bad hair days, Matt? I'm I just don't thinking this have through. enough hair to have a bad day. When I ride my scooter and the helmet pushes my hair down. Get a little helmet but, head. Maybe. I'm yeah. just giving the girl point of view that, you mm. know, be, maybe being more creative in the way that you either comment compliment others or that you give to others um, mm -hmm. okay, because as we're looking at the opposite of instead of being com you know competitive or competing with somebody else being creative in what you can share with them being creative in how you can build them and, and creative in how you can build yourself mm -hmm. and part of that too is how can I create for someone else every once in a while I'll do an activity where it's you know what no math today it's make somebody's day day oh, and the yeah. whole idea of the day is you're getting outside of yourself and your own self-interest to make someone else's day and you've got to write it up and show me how are you going to do how are you going to make someone's day and i've mm -hmm. and i'll approve it and make sure that it, they follow through on it but it's a matter of helping other people get what they want and this is mm -hmm. Zig Ziglar teaches this. You can have anything you want in life if you help enough other people get what they, get want. What they want. And if what you want is self-esteem and happiness and peace or more friends, well, be a friend. Give a compliment. Mm -hmm. Help lift somebody else's self-esteem. And by doing that, you get out of your own self-pity and your own self-thinking or thinking that I'm a bad person and because you see someone, yeah, mm -hmm. you're self-loathing. That's mm -hmm. a good word to use. And so, um, there was one girl who, who was at our school and, uh, she played, she played on our basketball team and she was just really down. And as one of the coaches, I said, we are going to every day make someone else's day every mm -hmm. day. And you tell me what it is and we're going to do it. And we did that. And for that week and time thereafter, it's got to be a consistent thing. But she was, she was really excited about life because she got to help other people feel good. Powerful stuff. We'll be right back. Raising kids is one of the most challenging and rewarding experiences we can have in life. Your children didn't come with an owner's manual, so it's up to you to learn whatever will assist you in your role as a mom or a dad. Join me and my husband, Dr. Paul, for a free weekly discussion about all of the hot topics in parenting. Listen to what others are saying about these calls. By applying the things I've learned to the parental power calls, I'm finally becoming the mom I always thought I would be. I really like to use parental power as kind of like a reference book. So as I have concerns with my parenting, I like to be able to look up on the blog and then listen to whatever podcast seems closely related. So I like the variety of, of topics, the variety of age groups that are addressed. I'm on the parental power calls as often as I possibly can, 
because I know I'm going to come away with something I can apply to being a parent that very day. Let us join your parenting team through parental power. Just send an email to Dr. Paul at liveonpurposeradio.com to register for the live calls. Or just check us out first through the link at drpaul.org. All of the previous calls are posted on our blog site, where you can also add your own input. Let's team up to start parenting on purpose. This is Kirk Weasler to tell you about morebetterbooks.com. Morebetterbooks.com is where you can find more better books for a more better life. Not only that, let me tell you about some of the very fun and cool select titles on morebetterbooks.com. You'll want to get a copy of The Dog Poop Initiative. This best smelling book could change your life forever. It certainly changed the lives of thousands of Boeing employees as well as school teachers, parents, leaders across the United States and in Israel and in Germany. And you can get your own copy at morebetterbooks.com. Whoa, that's not all. What about The Cookie Thief? This classic tale told in a rhyming format, fully illustrated with very fun hit messages. Pick up a copy now today on morebetterbooks.com. Other great titles there, Finding Your Pathway to Mastery, Beyond Illusions, Make It Great. These titles are only available on morebetterbooks.com. Go to morebetterbooks.com today and begin to have a more better life and live that life on purpose. Okay, if we don't hurry real fast, we're not going to get to this last point. Now, okay, so we went over the first three C's, comparing, competing, and criticizing. And incidentally, that's what you don't do, yes. right? Or That's the destructive end of the spectrum. And to contrast, instead of comparing, we're going to work on building character in yourself and others. Instead of competing... We're going to work at being more creative. About, and, and I'm thinking about what you said earlier too, Matt, about just your unique abilities and what it is that you have to offer. Forget what everybody else has to offer. That's really cool, and you can benefit from that. But you're not here to compare yourself with them or to compete with them on those issues, yeah. but to build your own skills creatively. Hugh Nibley actually had a quote that really changed my paradigm and really changed my life and the direction it was headed. I was just reading a, a book by him and he said, paraphrasing, paraphrasing, he said, be yourself because then mm -hmm. you can make a difference. If you're trying to be someone else, you're trying to, to do what they do. But if mm -hmm. you be without yourself, their skill set. Yeah, without their skill set, without their if package, you yeah. be yourself, then you can make a difference. And I thought, Oh, I don't have to be like this person, this person, this person. I can just be me and like me. Yeah. And offer way more to the world. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And you'll quit irritating people so much too. <laughs> have you noticed that when people are really trying to, you know, the wannabes yes. that are out there? And this goes around in teen culture quite a bit oh, too. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. the, the wannabe syndrome. Give it up. Be you. Mm -hmm. You're already you, so it shouldn't be too hard. <laughs> <laughs> Right, but then use your creative juices to be creative about how you can create value. How many times can I use the word create in the same sentence? <laughs> you know, being creative. So we've got one more we yes. need. Criticism, how are we going to, what's the antidote to that one? The antidote to criticism is to be able to develop compassion oh, for I other like people it. and to be able to see them outside of your own set of shoes and, and try to get into their set of shoes and see where are they coming from. And I'm going to reference uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People again because I think it's such a great book. And one of the, the leading principles in that book is to just become genuinely interested in other people and to just ask other people about their lives because what is their favorite topic Themselves. Themselves. If you look at a picture. Mm -hmm. What's yours? If you look at a picture, <laughs> who do you look for in the picture? <laughs> Yourself. Yourself. Unless you're a teenage boy and then yes. you look for cute girls. <laughs> but 
but you look for yourself because that's people's favorite thing to talk about is themselves. And so if you can get people talking about themselves by asking them questions, Mm -hmm. they'll go away and think, I really like that guy. And they don't, they may not even know anything about you, Mm -hmm. but they like you because you were able to help them feel important. You know, I had a fascinating interview once with Dr. Anne Demaray. She wrote a book called First Impressions. And uh, this is one of the points that she made. There's a lot of different ways of thinking about an interaction. And what she pointed out in her book is that people will feel the best about you when they feel good about themselves when they're with you. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. So compassion is a really quick shortcut to get there. Right. I was talking with a teen girl um, a couple of weeks ago, and we were talking about, you know, how one of the, one of her concerns was is, you know, I'm not that so, I'm social, but it's hard for me to introduce myself to a group. And how do I do that? And how do I, if I want to be, a, you know, some if I want to meet new people and have different friends, how do I do that? And and it was just so interesting to me that that's one of the first things that I, you know, came to my mind because of this concept of, of creating compassion. I said, what if you just went over to them and you, you listened? Um, cause she said, I never know what to say and was really concerned about what she had to say mm-hmm. to have, to be included. And I said, what if you just listened at first and just listened to what they were saying and listened to what they were talking about? And then ask them more questions about those things. Oh, I've never thought about that. Or, oh, that's interesting. You know, how did, how did you do that? Or what was that like? Or, you know, it, talking about different things, asking the other person questions. And it just kind of feeds right into what we were talking about. And it, and it just really shocked her. And so I, I told her to go try it out. And she did. And she's had a blast with this new group of friends that she's that she's made. And it really just took building compassion within herself and seeing others. And rather than mm-hmm. feeling like I needed to be, I have to be, I need, I need, I need in that relationship, mm-hmm. but rather starting um, from a compassionate point of view. So a related concept would be empathy. Yes. In order to have compassion, you, mm-hmm. must, you must have some kind of empathy. You must create that within yourself. In defining empathy, I always like to include two important components, and that is that you understand and care about how somebody else feels. Mm -hmm. And I think when you have both the understanding and the caring, it allows you to align with them in a very compassionate way. Which is a very different definition of what most people think empathy is, is kind of putting yourself in somebody else's shoes because you can do that Mm. all day. (laughs) But without, you know, really caring or understanding where they're at, it's not going to matter. Well, and there's a danger to that too because you might think, well, if I were in their position, I wouldn't be so darn upset about all of that. Mm-hmm. You know, I would be handling it differently. <laughs> so and then you're, little then, you're, then you're competing again because you're saying, That's well, right. I'm better. But I like that, that you brought up that caring has to be a part of it because if, if you don't really care about the other person or you're not genuinely interested in the other person, then what you're using is just a technique. Mm-hmm. And people can tell when you're just using techniques Mm -hmm. and when you really care about them there's an emotion that comes through and sometimes just using a technique to try to manipulate someone is more damaging to a relationship than using the technique when you or not doing anything but when you use the technique when you really care the caring is what comes through and the caring is what helps that relationship and the caring is what is what helps both people get something out of that conversation or out of that relationship and be better people for it. Mm -hmm. That's right. There's a big difference between principle and technique. And the principle behind the whole thing is compassion. And there are a lot of techniques that can help you with compassion, like empathic listening Mm -hmm. or reflective phrases. Mm -hmm. See, now I'm doing therapy speak. (laughs) Summarizing. (laughs) It's it's basically just using whatever techniques to help show that person that you understand and care Mm -hmm. how they feel. And getting yourself out of the picture enough to realize that it's not really about me right now. And the nice little paradox that hopefully you can see as we've had this discussion, as you shift your focus to help other people to feel better about themselves and their own life and building character and giving the compliments and 
and using the creativity and the compassion, that lifts you too. And and compassion is one of the hardest things to practice for yourself. <laughs> you can't do you do agree? Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, I see so many people who are who lack compassion for themselves, and they beat themselves up over and over and over for mm-hmm. whatever it is. And they might treat their friends just fine, right? But internally, they're they're the least compassionate towards mm-hmm. themselves. The least compassionate, mm-hmm. the least tolerant, mm-hmm. the most Accepting. critical. Less accepting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, one, of, one of the things that I try to get across, especially in testing in a math class, is, and I'll say, how do we learn? And the whole class in unison will say, by making mistakes. Because <laughs> I want them to understand that's you learn by making mistakes. Don't be afraid to make a mistake. In fact, get busy. Yeah, make Doing more them. mistakes because that's how you, under, when you understand, this is what I need to work on. This is, here's a lesson that I can learn from this mistake and the consequences that came from that mistake. Don't be afraid to make a mistake. And sometimes mm-hmm. teenagers growing up are paralyzed because if I make a mistake, and a especially, com- yeah, complete especially, failure. Exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. I think when you think of, you know, making mistakes or when, or, or making a decision, those are just experiences. They're not fine. They're not the end all, you know, to, to your experience or to your circumstance. It's just, it's just in and of itself an experience that -hmm. when you make a mistake, it's just an experience. It's not the end all. It's not the defining moment. It's really easy to avoid mistakes by not playing the game. (laughs) <laughs> you know, but if you're sitting down on the sidelines and you're not playing the game, you're also not going to score any points. That's true. And you're not going to get to uh, to the goals that you want in your life because you're not making the attempt. And in the attempt, you're going to stumble, you're going to fall, you're going to make some mistakes, and that's fine. That's not a problem. In fact, what you guys are suggesting is that's a good thing. Right. Yes, we are. <laughs> get better at it do it faster I think Robert Kiyosaki says that in one of his books too get better at making mistakes faster well he also says I know a lot of poor people who have never lost a penny but I don't know one rich person that hasn't lost a lot of money a lot of money <laughs> exactly. So. exactly now that gives me a lot of hope <laughs> <laughs> which I already have I have that perspective um, and it can feel very costly in the middle of it. But remember, that's where you are. And that's what you're saying, Summer. You're in the middle of this story. You're not at the end of it. Yeah. This has been, I think, a very productive conversation. We've talked about teenage girls, but these principles apply to anyone. And uh, that's just a good example to illustrate these three C's and the alternate three C's. Compare, compete, and criticize versus building character, being creative, and having compassion. That's a great message for today. You guys are doing some stuff that people might want to get connected with. What's the best way for our listeners to find you or to connect with what it is that you're doing? Do you have a website? We do have a website. Our, Perfect. Our, <laughs> get ready. Get we'll your pens a, out. We'll put a link up at liveonpurposeradio.com. Oh, great. But why don't you fly with it here somewhere? Sure. It is, it is www.teenesteem.com. Council, council spelled C O U N S E L dot com. Teen Esteem Council. Yes. Dot com. And we Perfect. are also in the process. Um, Matt, one of Matt and I's goal is to um, help our website be an interactive, um, very creative experience for teens to go to and to experience. And so. Um, we're going to, and, and, and why, why council is SEL, <laughs> we're going to be a part of, and, in, and in, in this process of creating, um, value for, for teens, but also elicit the help of teens because they are our driving force and they're our passion. They're why we do what we do. So there'll be opportunities for people to interact, take part, yes. post comments, things like that. Yep. Perfect. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Thank you, Summer. Thank you again. It's Love always always great to have these kinds of discussions. And for all of you who are listening in, think of that one person that you thought of during this show that you think would benefit from hearing this content and send them a link. 
And other than that, go out there and live on purpose. We'll catch you next time.